Hi everybody, this is Kevin Purcell for Notebooks.com and we're going to do a little project today and I want to show you how to do it. What I've done is I have my brand new MacBook Pro uh, which is a, a great system, I really love it. You'll be able to read our review at Notebooks.com very shortly. This is the 15.4 inch model and it's the stock model, the cheaper one. Uh, it's uh, $1,800, $1,799 but it only comes with a 5400 RPM hard drive. Uh, that's a little bit slow compared to the rest of the specs of the system and I'm a little disappointed that they didn't put a 7200 in it. Now you can upgrade it and get a little bit faster hard drive for another hundred dollars and you can also upgrade it with an SSD, a solid state device or d drive and uh, that's much faster. That's like the hard drives that come in the MacBook Air and we did when we did the review of that we noticed that uh, the hard drive really makes up for the slow specs of the rest of the MacBook Air system. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of take the best of both worlds. The problem with an SSD is low storage mount. Uh, my MacBook Air has only 128 gigabytes and it's already, I'm already hitting the upper level of that after just about a few months of use. However, a uh, very large hard drive like the one that's in here, the 500 gigabyte drive, is, is a little bit slow. Well what this is, this is the uh, Seagate Momentus XT it's a 7200 RPM hard drive. It's got 500 gigabytes of storage, but what it also has is 4 gigabytes of SSD storage built in. It's what they call a hybrid drive. It sort of takes the best of both worlds. You get the inexpensive volume of a traditional uh, hard drive, but you also get the speed and low power consumption of the um, uh, of the solid state storage uh, of, of an SSD and it marries the two together so it speeds up the traditional drive but it also um, adds volume to what you would normally get with an SSD so we're going to go ahead and pop the uh, MacBook Pro open and show you how we install this drive alright so what you're going to need in order to do this is two screwdrivers now this is a little jeweler's screw it's a very tiny Phillips head screwdriver and uh, you can get these, you know, at almost anywhere. They're not very expensive. And then what you need is a Torx screwdriver. Now I got this one at Lowe's. It's a cobalt, and it's really nice. It's got the uh, the heads inside the body. And you're going to use the T-6 model, T-6. So when you get one of these, make sure you get one that has a T-6 on it. All right. So here's a little trick that I learned from the guys over at um, at Tested. What you do is you take a piece of uh, tape. Probably the best thing to use would be something like duct tape, but I don't have any right now. So I'm just going to use this packing tape. Get yourself a nice piece of it. Fold it over. Stick it to the surface of your work surface. And then what you're going to do is every time you take a screw out, you're going to put it there. That way it won't go rolling around. Now the MacBook Air or the MacBook rather, is a unibody construction and that means it has one large bottom plate. Uh, on traditional, on a regular, on a Windows PCs, what you normally see is they'll have just a square for you can take the hard drive out. Now that's a really nice thing to have, but that's what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this whole bottom plate off. Now before you get too scared, it's really not that hard. Before you do this though, the best thing to get assurance is backup. That means what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run Time Machine or some other backup system to make sure all your data is backed up so you don't lose anything. Alright, so what we're going to do is go ahead and take the screws off. So what I like to do is start in one corner and work my way around and uh, place them on the, uh, the tape in that same order. That way you sort of can remember which uh, direction they're going to go. Now these screws, you can hardly see that. That's how small it is. So you want to make sure you do something like this to put it on the tape. Some of these screws might be a little hard to uh, undo. That's alright. Just kind of give it a little force and uh, you won't break it. Now these last three screws are actually fairly long. And so it's really important that you remember which hole they came out of. That's why I like to do this arranging it on the piece of tape. And the other thing you want to remember is which side is which side. So the side with the black goes towards the tape. Now getting this bottom plate off is a little difficult so I put my finger right under here along the black edge 
and notice how it pops off pretty well. There's not an awful lot to this, just make sure you set it somewhere safe. Alright, so we're just going to sort of take a look around in here while we've got the uh, MacBook open. You notice we've got the fans down here. That's where the uh, that's where the memory would go. If you were going to replace that memory, you'd have to pry these two sides open. The memory then pops up. You have to take it out carefully, and then you can replace it. It comes with four gigabytes. I actually went ahead while I was here, replaced it so that I've got now got eight gigabytes in this system. And then, of course, uh, wonderful Apple battery life. In our test, uh, the battery, everything full bore, running everything as fast and hard as it'll go. Screen brightness. We really wanted to try to drain the battery system as fast as we could, and it lasted about three and a half hours. Now over here is where the hard drive is. Now right now you'll notice I've already got the new hard drive in. Um, that's because I'm showing you this afterwards, but it's the same basic principles. It's got this little bar right here, and you're going to have to unscrew that first with your Phillips head screwdriver. So we're going to do that now. Now this little plastic bar has two screws in it. So go ahead and unscrew it. I don't actually take the screws out of the bar. I just get them loose so that the bar can be taken off. The purpose of this thing is to hold the hard drive into place. So now we're going to put this over here right next to our tape. We're going to make sure we put it the same way we took it out. Now the original MacBook hard drive, I've got it over here. The original one, this one is a Toshiba, you can see the Apple symbol. It has this little pull tab, which is real nice because once you get that, it's easy to pull out. So the hard drive, now that we've got it out, is really just resting in there. But you'll notice once you take it out, first of all, it's got this ribbon. Now be very careful with this ribbon. This is where you might just absolutely ruin your MacBook Pro. What you want to do is just gently pull that connector off, lay it down here on top of the CD, and so you'll notice that it's a e SATA or it's a SATA drive here. Now it's got these four little screws on the side here. What these do is you'll notice they rest inside some places on the computer. And these are what keep the hard drive from bouncing around and um, moving while it's spinning inside the computer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and take these off. This is why you need the Torx screwdriver. So just very carefully unscrew them. And the last couple revolutions I just do it with my finger. And put it down over here on the tape. Alright, now once you've done that you're going to take your new hard drive. It's going to come in a wrapper just like this. Go ahead and rip open the wrapper and you're going to take those screws and they're going to go in the sides just like they were on the installed hard drive. You'll have four of these to install. Now that you have all four pieces, all four little screws on it, you want to make sure that the part that has the connector goes towards the edge take the little ribbon connector, line it up so that the smaller part is the same. It's actually going to go under the hard drive so you want to make sure it's that part is down and let's go ahead and connect that. Make sure you got a good secure connection and again be very careful with that ribbon. Now these posts along the side. You're going to put one side in first and then the other side is just going to slide into place. You want to put them in here because they have holes inside there. Okay? And then it'll just drop down into place here. That's why the bar sits on this side to hold it in. So we're now going to take our bar, drop that down in there very carefully so we don't drop the screws out. Now get your Phillips head screwdriver again, and you've got it installed. Alright, so now we've got the hard drive in place, and we're ready to go ahead and replace this back plate. Now again, you want the black part, that's the vent for these two big fans back here. You want it to go on the back. You just set it down in place. 
Don't worry if it doesn't pop right in, the screws will pull it in for you. In the same order that I took them out, I'm going to put them back in. Get the little screw off of our tape. So again, we just go in the same order that we took them out. That way we're sure to get the right screw in the right hole. Now when you're screwing these screws in, one of the things that might happen is it might sort of go in at a wrong angle. As you start to screw it in and it doesn't quite fit right, just sort of take it back, turn it back just a little bit, and it'll probably pop into place like that one just did. Now remember these long screws go on the back side as you're over here. If you hold it like I do with the back, the black vent side on your right, then the three long screws are in the three screw holes closest to you. After you're done, take your tape. Throw it away. Now we're ready to boot it up and see if it works.